hey, right there. <gasps> hey guys. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Hope you're doing well. I've been so excited to film this video, literally for the longest time, because I've been in a bit of a reading slump lately. I'm literally not enjoying any books that I pick up. I can't even get through 30 pages of a book right now, like it's getting that serious, and I can slowly feel a reading slump just ingraining itself into my brain, and obviously that's not good. In today's video, I'm gonna put it into the hands of my favorite book creators, my favorite booktubers, and I've asked five of them to recommend me some books, and that is what we're gonna read in today's video. I hope you enjoy. So, the first book of this video was recommended by Julie, you'll probably know her as Books with JB, and she's the absolute queen of Bookstagram, she does amazing booktube videos, I'm actually quite obsessed with her, and I sent her my Goodreads, sent her a text saying, please send me a book recommendation, and she chose The Deal by L. Kennedy. I'm glad that she picked it, I really want to get more into sports romances, and I think this one's a hockey romance. I finally read the first 50 pages of a book as I said in the intro I literally couldn't get past 30 pages in any book I don't know why I got to page like 25 and I was like I'm not feeling this however we have finally reached the 50 page mark and I'm loving it so far my first thoughts of the book so far are really really good I like the main characters so far and I'm really enjoying the hockey college vibe I think I enjoy sports romances that are set in America more because I never get that sports vibe here. I feel like sport is just portrayed so much nicer and so much more enthusiastically and just so it's so much more of a thing in America so the sports culture is really good to read. So I love a good sports romance that is set in the US and it just makes me want to move to America and go and watch sports games all day. But I'm currently on chapter 6 which is page 49 and I'm 16% of the way through and really really enjoying this so far. It's a good recommendation so far, I'm enjoying it. I hope that it stays that way though. Oh my goodness that scared me so bad. Oh, I need to post on booktop. <laughs> Jesus. God that was scary. A bit later on now I had a bath and got all cozy and I've reached the 100 page mark in the book I think I'm on page like 110 let me just check 109 there we go to be fair I'm still really enjoying it still loving it just as much as before however there's one thing with the main character that's really really annoying me so the main female character Hannah for some reason every single guy that she introduces or speaks about or just observes in general she calls good looking not every guy is going to be good looking. I know that's so stupid and it's just me being so picky. And obviously the book is meant to be this stereotypical hot college guys. You've got the hockey team, the football team, the music guys and everything. Like it is meant to be this stereotypical hot college guy situation. But every single guy she talks to, she's like, oh my god, he's so good looking. Like chill. Like surely it just i mean it's just me being picky and it is nice to see that she finds people attractive and stuff but it's just so unrealistic it just that's the thing it just like you don't even have to mention his appearance just say he's a nice guy you don't even have to mention that he's good looking at all you don't even have to say anything at all just say you spoke to him other than that though really enjoying the book but it's just that when she speaks to someone and it's every two seconds she's like oh my god he's really good looking i'm like girl shut up <laughs> please It is the next day and I'm sat out in the garden just sunbathing for a little bit. I'm trying to get a base tan for before I go on holiday because last time I went on holiday I literally burnt to a crisp. I went bright red and it was not enjoyable. <laughs> so I'm trying to get a base tan so that's why I'm sat outside now. I read to page 115 last night which is chapter 15 and I'm still really really enjoying it so far which is good and I'm aiming to finish it today. Thanks. 
it is the next morning and I did plan on finishing the deal last night but I ended up editing my April and May wrap up for YouTube and got a little bit sidetracked. I did however manage to read until 40 pages left so I'm on page 286 right now and I've had a bath and hair wash and I'm just going to finish getting myself ready and then I'm going to finish it. Guys, we have finished the first book of this video. I've just gone and sat down and finished the deal and I really, really, really liked it. I think I'm gonna rate it a 4.75 star. I was toying between a five star and a 4.75, but I was like, if I really have to think about it, then it's probably not a five star, if that makes sense. So I've gone for 4.75 for now, but that rating could change. I change my ratings all the time, but I really thought it was fun. I thought the writing style was really easy to read and I really liked the main characters in the book. Both of the main characters both had like issues that they dealt with that happened in the past like the main male character Garrett had issues with his dad and the main female character Hannah she had some issues of an event that happened in the past and stuff and they worked on that together as a couple this sounds a bit weird but I really like it when there's like trauma in books and then they work through it and stuff like that I just think it's nice to see that not everyone's life is perfect when you're reading a book and stuff because it's it makes it not fairy tale like it makes it seem that I like realism in books basically I'm gonna head to Riley's now as you guys know that is what I do on a Friday and then I'm gonna introduce the next book when we get there I honestly do think though that if I ever do want to get out of a slump hockey romances are the way to go for me the last two hockey romances I've read I've absolutely adored it was icebreaker and the deal and I've loved both of them hey guys why does everyone decide to come down the road now go away what are you doing can everyone just leave me alone I just wanted to address my little hat quickly. Riley's mum just gave me the idea one day to order a personalised hat and I was like, oh my God, I need an Ella Rose Reads hat. So that is what my hat says. The next book for this video was recommended to me by none other than the Queen herself, Alexa Ray. Me and Alexa Ray have spoken on a couple of occasions now and she is honestly one of the nicest people that I've ever spoken to in my life. And she's just so lovely, so happy. And if you guys watch Alexa Ray, you will know that one of her favourite books ever is Archer's Voice by Mia Sheridan. But with this book, I wasn't actually overly fussed on reading it at first. When she first spoke about it on her channel, I was like, oh, okay, sounds okay, but not on the top of my list at the moment. But then time went on and I was like, actually, I quite fancy the idea of that. So I added it to my Goodreads, sent her the message and I was like, I already knew. I already knew just by her looking that this book was on my Goodreads, I knew she'd pick it. I'm actually looking at the messages now and she actually gave me four options. This girl is consistent. I love that for you, Alexa. But she gave me Archer's Voice, The Fine Print, Flawless and Once Upon a Broken Heart. But obviously she did say some of them that I love and I knew that I'd go for this because it is her favourite book. So... It's only right to read Alexa Ray's favourite book. It's only fair and it's only right to do so. So I can't wait to see my opinion. I'm going to get started on it now. Hey guys, it's been a few days now since I last updated you. The last time I spoke to you was Friday. It is now Monday, but I've just had some things to do. I've had family events. I've had you know barbecues and things to go to so i haven't actually sat down and managed to read a lot but i'm going to give you a little first impressions of what i think about archer's voice right now and i just want to say that i got this book fully wrong i mean i sort of went into it blind had a rough idea of what the plot was about but didn't actually know many details but the small town vibe in this book is amazing i mean i say that i'm literally on page 55 so i haven't actually managed to read much at all really but the first couple of chapters have been really good. I'm on chapter seven right now. There's someone coming, one second. I feel like as well, when I read a book, I can sort of picture, I do have a good imagination. I can sort of picture everything that's described. But with this book, I feel like I can imagine every single minuscule detail, which is obviously really, really good. It shows that I'm enjoying it. I feel like normally, say for example, a kitchen was described to me. I know that's really random. But a kitchen, for example, I would picture like a couple of appliances, random stuff like that. But in this book, I can literally imagine like a fruit bowl on the side. I can imagine the vase of flowers. I can literally imagine the pictures on the wall, like every single minuscule detail, which is obviously really good. But yeah, it's a lovely day. As you can see, the sun is shining. I'm actually currently at my uni campus because Riley's playing basketball in our sports hall with his friend. So I thought I'd tag along and join his party and just basically crash his day as per usual. So I was like, I'm gonna come and read. That's, that sounds fun.
I'm not kidding when I tell you that all I've wanted to do all day is sit and read, like, in the garden. But the sun is just not cooperating today. I don't know why the clouds have just joined together and just said, yeah, it's Ella's day off. Let's join together and just be annoying so she can't read outside. Like, I think the clouds actually hate me right now. But the sun is slowly poking through. It is the afternoon. So I'm going to go and sit out there now. It's probably cold. It is England, to be honest. But I'm going to see how long I can sit there for and see if I can get some reading done. I can never get on this chair without injuring myself. Stupid. Okay. Okay, I get it. Oh my god. Oh my goodness that book actually destroyed my entire soul and I'm still I still haven't emotionally recovered from that I don't know how I'm ever gonna get over it so the book was about a guy called Archer and he has damaged vocal cords so he's unable to speak he has to sign and the main female character Brie moves to a small town meets him but obviously he's very isolated doesn't really get on with the town hasn't actually been out of his house properly since he was seven years old because of like issues he just doesn't feel confident enough to go outside and stuff and just the whole small town vibe of that book was just amazing i've never i could picture everything in that town like i can imagine myself living somewhere like that it was just um, beautiful absolutely beautiful i actually think i might make a pinterest board of this book like it's getting i'm obsessed i am gonna rate the book a 4.75 star i really liked how it was still partly dual point of view even though the main male character couldn't speak even though archer was unable to speak he still got some chapters and he still his feelings were still portrayed that way and i really really liked that i liked how mia sheridan the author she sort of explained archer's feelings through multiple different chapters i don't know it's really confusing to sort of describe you have to read the book to understand sort of like the format of it this is such a special story and i feel like if you haven't read this I would 100% recommend it. I definitely, definitely think this is a story that everyone should read. He was so misunderstood and so misguided and just, he his story needs to be heard. I know it's not real, I know it's fictional, but I would strongly advise anyone to read this book. It's such a lovely story, so beautiful and definitely one that I'm gonna remember, definitely one that I'm gonna carry with me. I really don't think anyone's gonna understand the excitement I feel for the next book in this video and is probably one of my most anticipated reads ever so honestly i can't wait to read it the next book was recommended to me by the booktube queen herself sarah caroli i love sarah she's probably my favorite out of all of the booktubers i feel like i watch a select few but sarah's the one i watch the most so i sent her my goodreads i sent her the text to ask her for the recommendation and she picked one of the books that i've been most excited to read in forever i feel like it is one of my most anticipated reads so the book is a cowboy romance and that is flawless by elsie silver 
Flawless and the Chestnut Spring series in general has just gone so viral recently. Honestly, every like couple of posts on my bookstagram, on TikTok, no matter what social media platform I'm on, I'm seeing these books. They have just blown up and everyone raves about them. So that is obviously why I can't wait to read them. It's a cowboy romance. I think it's slightly age gap. I think it's about a bull rider and his boss's daughter and they sort of like have to look after. I think the boss's daughter looks after the guy because he's like, one of them arrogant people and he sort of like gets in trouble and stuff so the boss's daughter has to look after him. I really did think that Sarah was going to pick the Magnolia Parks series for her choice of this video. So I actually texted her, I was like, I really thought you'd pick Magnolia Parks because she's recently got into them. She recently loves the Magnolia Parks series. They've become literally some of her favourite books in the last couple of months. So as they are on my Goodreads because I really want to read them, I was like, she's definitely going to pick that. But when she picked Flawless, I was pleasantly surprised because obviously I want to read them both but Flawless I'm really, really excited for. So I can't wait to read it. Guys, I just hit a thousand subscribers. It is my first little YouTube milestone and I'm so, so grateful. So thank you so much if you are subscribed to me. I just love making videos so much. It's literally one of my favorite things to do and I've made so many good friends doing social media for books and stuff and just buddy reading with you guys, speaking to you guys about your favorite books. It just means the world to me. So thank you so much for subscribing to my channel. I also have, because I'm still reading Flawless by Elsie Silver, loving it by the way i will do like a proper first impressions in a minute but i am wearing my little cowgirl t-shirt because vibes i don't think you guys understand how hot it is in england right now it's probably nothing to wherever you guys are if you're not in england but alexa what's the temperature at the moment it's 21 degrees celsius but i'm gonna do a little first impressions of flawless right now and i'm gonna say I'm gonna love this book. I can literally already tell from the first 71 pages. When I got to work yesterday, I managed to read up to page 71. I'm now on page 77, which actually is in the middle of a chapter because I was literally on the sofa last night. I've been up like really early in the morning, went to work and I was just on the sofa trying to read. And you know, like when the words are like moving on the page because you're just so tired. So I just had to stop. Like if you're in the middle of a book and you sort of skim over something because you're tired, I guess it doesn't really matter as much because you sort of already know what's going on. But in the first sort of quarter of the book, I need to know what's going on. But I really like the main characters. I like how they've both got banter by themselves and with each other from literally like the first couple of chapters. Like they, they're already bouncing off each other and it's sort of like a love-hate kind of thing. And I like how the main girl character, Summer, she's like, I'm not going to take any shit from this man. This is a grumpy old man and I'm not going to let him dictate my life. That is what I really like about her. She's got that kind of like boisterous personality and the banter, but it's like borderline flirting at the same time. Obviously I briefly know what the second and third and even now fourth book that just came out the other day I know what they're based on, like the characters and stuff. Elsie Silver introduced like the other characters pretty much straight away. We met, okay. We met Rhett's brothers literally in the first couple of chapters. The next couple of books are based off of his brothers, I think. It's just nice to see like the little crumbs of the brothers. And then obviously when I get onto the second and third and fourth book, I can like get to know them even more. Look at my little cowgirl vibe. How cute is that? Oh. <laughs> what the f Yeah. yeah. on page 100 and obviously Summer's dad is the boss of this company and he sent Summer to go and look after Rhett who is the bull rider but I'm just thinking my dad would never send me into this cabin with this guy like randomly like to live there my dad would literally be like you're not going anywhere you're not going near this man like I just think it's so weird that the dad's like obviously it needs to happen for the company and it needs to happen to like sort Rhett's reputation out but it's just the fact that like the dad just like shipped her off to him. Like my dad would never. words right now. I'm gonna have to get back to you in the morning on that one. Guys, I finished Flawless. 
by Elsie Silver last night and that is probably one of the easiest five stars I've ever given a book. I absolutely devoured it and just really liked the writing, the setting, just the characters, just everything about this book I loved. I feel like Elsie Silver did a really good job in portraying how people deal with certain situations. I feel like she really researched it, really got that down because you could really tell that Rhett was a man if that makes sense and I know that sounds weird. I feel like a lot of authors just slap a golden retriever act on loads of men and you're like oh my god that's so cute but obviously not all men are like that. So I feel like Elsie really captured the grumpiness of Rhett but still made him a good character, still made him a good person but it really... It was how a man would act and I really liked just how realistic it was. I just can't wait to get into the rest of the series now but I have to wait until after my birthday because I have asked for them for my birthday. But yeah, absolutely loved this, definitely a five star. So I know that I said I'd do five books for this video but I've been editing it as I've gone along and I know that it's quite long already so I'm going to do four for now and I did actually get another recommendation from someone else but it's a book that I've asked for for my birthday so I was like I can't read that until after my birthday, it's not fair. So if you enjoyed this video I'm probably going to do a part two where I do the rest of the suggestions from the booktubers because I did get quite a few more answers. But the final book of this video is recommended to me by Lauren's Reading Corner. Lauren, I love you. She does amazing booktube videos, her Instagram is absolutely to die for, I have taken so much inspiration from her content and I just love her, she's great. So I sent her the message, I sent her my Goodreads and I said please send me a book recommendation and she picked 28 Summers by Ellen Hildebrand which I actually spoke about in my summer TBR video, I think that was my last video, but I've really wanted to read it for quite a long time. As I said before in that video, Destiny Sidwell described it as the perfect summer read and just Ellen Hildebrand's books in general as perfect summer reads and I'm getting into my summer read era right now, so most definitely want to read that. So that is what we're going to be reading today. I don't have the physical copy so I'm going to get it on Amazon and then obviously it will go onto my Kindle for me to read. So that is what we're going to do now. It's actually really dark in here. Oh. Turn your brake lights off. I've literally just finished work for the morning. I came back to the car to get changed because I was not walking around in my work t-shirt. I don't want to do that. But I have to wait at my shopping centre where I work for a couple of hours now because I'm going to my dad's later and he actually lives past the shopping centre so there's no point me going all the way back home and all the way back here. Anyway, you don't care about that but obviously it gives me a couple of hours to read so I'm going to go to Starbucks, get a coffee, get something to eat and sit and read in there for a little bit but if it is busy in there I'll probably go somewhere else and read but that is definitely the first stop at the moment. Hey guys, it is a little bit later on now, same day as before and I haven't done a first impressions of 21 summers yet and it's not looking too good. I can't lie it is interesting. The whole concept of the book is interesting. Looking through 28 different summers of someone's life is interesting. But I feel like because we only get to focus on mainly the summers, there's like vital points of people's lives that we're just missing out on. There is also another thing that I've got a problem with, but I don't know if it's a spoiler or if it's too much of a spoiler to say. So I'm going to put a little timestamp on the screen now and obviously you can just skip to that if you don't want the book spoiled for you. It's not like a major spoiler, but anyway so i'm on page 130 and literally from page one up until this point the whole book has just been pure cheating trope and honestly i cannot think of anything worse i just hate the cheating trope so much i literally read books about serial killers and i'm not kidding when i tell you that i would rather you tell me that you are dating a serial killer than if you cheated on your husband it's that serious i just feel like the whole first part of the book is just them cheating on other people with each other and it's just not I feel like I can't root for the characters I feel like I can't support this relationship because they're just not being loyal to other people and even though the other people are shitty people it doesn't mean they don't deserve some respect in their relationship I just think it's just it's just not nice and it's just making me not root for the couple therefore I'm not emotionally invested in the book right now and I don't really like it the way it was written is also kind of confusing it's sort of written in the present tense but it feels like it's just a list after list after list of events. For example, there's no filler language or anything. It's like, she thinks this, then she went out to the park, then she went to the beach, then she kissed this boy. Like, okay, where's the emotions? That is the one criticism I've got right now. I just don't understand where the language is in this book. I just feel like I'm reading her to-do list and it's just not good. 
<laughs> I'm hoping I like the book though. Obviously I'm only on page 130 out of like 420, so hopefully it gets a little bit better, but right now not overly loving it. As I said before though, I do love the concept of the book, so I can see why people like this. It's not boring, it, you know, the actual idea of it's good. I've read worse books, trust me, but I'm just not agreeing with it right now. I don't know, we will see. I've just downloaded the audiobook because I go on my summer holiday tomorrow. I'm literally on a plane tomorrow and I can't wait, but I need to get this book done so I can start my beach reads, get this video uploaded to you, and I feel like the audiobook just make it a little easier. guys. Ew, I'm getting that fan out of it. Good. Sorry if I sound all like snotty and congested. I've got really bad hay fever. But I've just finished 28 Summers by Ellen Hildebrand and read it on my Kindle and as an audiobook, mainly as an audiobook, but followed along on here and I didn't really like it very much. The ending was really wholesome. I liked how the story wrapped up. I feel like it wrapped up quite nicely. The fact that the main male love interest, Jake, was the love of her life and was her true love the entire time was really nice. But I just feel like the way they went about their relationship was just unforgivable. And that made me not root for them. I just feel like they had no respect for anyone around them. I just feel like just the way they dealt with everything was just not nice and just not forgivable and it just made me not root for them. I had no respect for their relationship whatsoever. I wasn't rooting for them at all. It just it made me disconnected from the book i felt like i wasn't emotionally invested because of that and it is all down to the trope that was put in this if you guys want to know i will tell you but i'm not going to say it in the video just in case people don't want to know what the trope is but it's one of my least favorite tropes it is mm -mm, not good i'm going to rate the book a two and a half star because again i love the premise of the book i love the concept the way it was written was really clever once i wrapped my head around sort of like the layout and stuff it did focus on quite a few characters at once though which did get a little bit confusing but still good nonetheless it just the trope took away the enjoyment for the book for me but we did read four great books in this video obviously we started off with the deal by l kennedy that was recommended to me by julie then we went on to archer's voice that was recommended to me by the lovely alexa ray if you know you know then of course flawless by elsie silver that was recommended to be by bestie sarah and then 28 summers that was recommended to be by lauren so thank you guys all so much for giving me these book recommendations and getting involved with this video i could not have done it without you guys as i said previously in the video though i am going to do a part two to this video because i did get a good few answers and there's enough to make a part two so if you do want that then definitely let me know as i thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed filming this video but if you guys did enjoy it too, then feel free to give it a thumbs up and subscribe down below and turn my little post notifications on so you get notified every time I post a video. I love you guys lots and I'll see you in my next one. Bye! This video took a month to film, guys. Be grateful. <laughs> Bye!